crew. It's time for another video um, where we learn a new job. Today I need to clean my bathroom and I'm going to show you how I do it uh, and while I'm doing it here at my home I'm going to use the same method that I do when I work with my students at the gas station cleaning the gas station bathroom. So I've gathered all my tools and I'm going to show you exactly what we need to do. As you can see, my bathroom is a mess right now. There's stuff on the counters. There's trash in the trash can. We've got a towel on the floor over here. And while you can't see it, that toilet needs to be cleaned too because it's been a whole week since we've cleaned. So it'll be important for us to get it really clean to make sure everyone stays safe and healthy. So you just saw everything that I have on my bathroom counter. And the very first thing that I do when I clean my bathroom is I get everything out of the way. And that's true when I'm working in a public space too. So if there's any extra soap dispensers or if there's a trash can in the way or if there's anything that I'm gonna have to clean around, I pick it up and I take it out of the room so that I make sure I can clean all the spaces without anything in my way. So I'm gonna start right now by taking all the extra stuff out. I'm gonna put my kids' um, toothbrushes and mouthwash up on the shelves out of the way. I'm taking all the soap dispensers mouthwash and contact solution, and I'm going to take it outside. And now that I've got all the stuff off my counters, now I'm going to pick up any dirty laundry that I have laying around. In a public bathroom, you won't usually have laundry laying around, but you could. You could have a work rag that somebody has left somewhere. But what you might find is you might find little pieces of trash on the floor. You might find paper towels or bits of toilet paper or something. It's good to get that out of the way too. So pick up any big pieces of laundry or junk that's gonna be in your way. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to put it in the laundry space. And last but not least, I'm going to pick up any other stuff that's in my way. So in this bathroom, there's a potty chair, there's a trash can, and there's a bath mat. Um, in a public bathroom at like a gas station or a restaurant, you may have a trash can. Um, and you may have other things. Who knows? There might be a, a child's potty seat there or something like that. So that's what we do next. Now, I forgot to mention at the first, but you can see that I am wearing um, I'm wearing clothes that I could get dirty in. Cleaning is a job where you might get messy. Would you wear your nicest um, dress up clothes to clean a bathroom? No, you wouldn't. You would wear clothes where you can get dirty because you will get dirty. That's part of this job. So here I have some old pants that I can get dirty in and my sweatshirt. All right, so the next thing I want to show you is I want to show you the cleaning supplies that I'm going to use. Here I have my cleaning supplies all laid out. When I clean my bathroom, I like to use Clorox wipes. However, right now it's very hard to get a hold of Clorox wipes. And public bathrooms often have specific types of cleaning supplies that they want to use. And in my experience, it's not usually a Clorox wipe or another disinfectant wipe. Usually it's something that comes in a spray bottle and is disinfectant. So that's the method I'm gonna show you today. I also have some um, bleach gel for the toilet bowl over there. I have, um, I, yeah, I have my spray for my counters and my toilet. 
I have a broom to sweep the floor and I have my wet dry mop that I will be able to um, wipe the floor with. I also have a cloth that I'm gonna use to wipe down my surfaces. And back there, kind of behind the toilet, you can see I've got a toilet bowl brush. So the first thing I like to wipe down is my mirror because it's high up. I always clean from the top to the bottom because gravity, the thing that pulls everything down, will pull all my cleaning supplies and all my dirty water down with it. So I start at the top. If I were to start down here at the bottom and wipe my counter first and get that all clean, and then I moved up and sprayed my, my mirror, all my mirror cleaning supplies would fall down on the sink and my, my sink and counter would be all dirty again. So I always start at the top. When I am spraying my, um, when I'm spraying my mirror, I usually do for a mirror this size about four sprays. One, two, three, four. That's about all it takes. You want to do more, but you shouldn't. You'll end up with too much stuff. So when I'm wiping, I wipe across, 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 across. So just back and forth. It can seem like you want to wipe around in a bunch of circles like this, and that's not bad, but can you see those streaks that it leaves? If you wipe back and forth, you'll end up getting everything the first time. The next thing I'm gonna clean is gonna be my counter. Now, it's kind of hard for me to get the camera in a place where you can see it well, so you won't see my face while I'm cleaning my counter. When I clean my counter, I want to get the whole surface, and I want to make sure that I get my um, that I get my faucet clean and the handles where people touch. Kara talked about in another video how to clean a doorknob, and this is very similar because this is a place where people touch all the time. So their germy hands might put germs all over those. And it's our job to kill those germs with our cleaning supplies. So I'm gonna start by spraying once on my faucet, and I'm gonna spray a couple of times on my counter. I'll go back and do my sink in just a moment. I showed you that back and forth method with the mirror, and it's the same thing here. So we'll start by getting our whole faucet clean. We wipe all the way around it, all the little spots. And I tell you what, you wanna get back here behind there too. So put your rag, kind of flatten it out so that it can reach behind and rub it back and forth. Now, my faucet is clean. So now I'm gonna use that back and forth method. And what I want to do is I look for, are there any stains that, any yuckiness? Look right here. Oh no, my son got his toothpaste there. I'm definitely going to need to work extra there. So I'm going to wipe back and forth and I'm going to start along the edge and then I'm going to move toward me. Wipe, 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 wipe. Now, when I look at my sink now, it looks much cleaner, but I can see in the light that there are a couple little places that I missed. So now I'm gonna spray again, spray, and I'm gonna spray again over here, spray. Those are the two places I missed. Now I'm gonna do that kind of circle method where I give some pressure and I rub it hard. Look, oh boy. Now I can see that it's clean, there's nothing left on there, and I can feel that it's clean. The next thing I'm gonna do, and it'll be hard to see in the mirror, but I'm going to spray in my sink. I hope that you can see my sink has a lot of dirt in it. Public bathrooms often have very dirty sinks because people are coming in and out all day long and using it. So what I like to do is I like to start around the edge, make sure my edge is really clean. And then I wipe around the bowl at the top of the sink. And then I just work downwards. And 
and right there at the drain can be the dirtiest, yuckiest part. So I make sure I really get that part. Look how much better that looks. Now's the part I don't like very much. It's the toilet. But it's very important to do a good job on a toilet, especially if you're working in a public restroom where lots of people will be using it. It's important to customers to feel comfortable sitting on your toilet and we make them feel comfortable by making it clean. So I'm gonna show you how. You notice that I cleaned the sink first. I cleaned the sink first because if I'm using the same rag for my sink and for my toilet, the sink has fewer germs. So we would want to wash the sink where people are gonna wash their hands and then wash the toilet with the rag. We would not want to get toilet germs on our rag and then take those same toilet germs to the sink. Oh, yucky. Now, at some um, gas stations or restaurants, they will have you use paper towels, and then you don't have to worry about what order you do this in because you throw the paper towels away in between the toilet and the sink. But if you're using the same rag or the same sponge, you want to do the sink first. Now, I talked to you just a moment ago about going from the top to the bottom, and that's what we do with the toilet too. We're gonna start on the top up here where it's kind of dusty, and we're gonna make sure we get that handle where everybody touches. Ooh, that could have lots of germs. It needs to be clean. We're gonna get our spray. And again, we're just gonna do a few sprays. One, two, three. Now, if I wipe on the top of my toilet in a circle like this, all that dust is just gonna stay on there. I'm going to try to wipe the back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth, and then at the end, I'm gonna try and press down and roll my rag off so that all of that dust and dirt comes off on the rag and does not stay on the toilet. Watch what I do. Back and forth, back and forth, pressure, and then I lift off. And I see I left some on there, so I'm gonna go back. The next thing I'm gonna do as I go down is I'm gonna do that handle. Oh boy, that handle looks cleaner already, which is good. That means we needed to clean our bathroom. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and forth on the tank of that toilet. It's looking clean now. Now we get to the really gunky part of the toilet where people touch it all the time. That's the seat. Um, that's the lid, the seat, and then the bowl. Um, we're going to spray on top of the seat. And we're going to wipe down the seat where people touch it sometimes. We're also going to pay attention behind the seat. There's this little area. And let's be honest, it's kind of gross, but pee gets back there and needs to be cleaned off of it, especially in a public restroom. So we're gonna be sure that we wipe back there before we lift the lid. Now we're gonna open up the lid and we're gonna spray. Lid and seat. Wipe, 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 wipe. And I'm going to wipe around the seat. My rag is staying out of the water that's in the toilet, but it is, um, it's covering over the edge of the toilet seat in case there's anything in that inner ring that needs to be cleaned. So I'm wiping around there now. Great. Now we're gonna lift up the lid. This is when it gets kind of gross. Great news, my toilet isn't that dirty, but public restrooms really can be dirty. Same, just a couple of sprays, a couple of sprays on the outside there, and here's a part that you might not think to clean, the outside of the toilet bowl. So we're going to spray down here too. I'm going to wipe the inside of my toilet seat, and oh goodness, that is looking clean. Great. Next, I'm going to go to the front of the toilet bowl. Looking clean, and there are a couple of areas here on the side where you're gonna wanna dust and clean and check to make sure there's nothing there. And guess what? There was something I needed to clean over there. Don't forget to check. 
The next thing you're going to do is the top of the toilet bowl. And I'm going to press down around the edge just like I did on the seat. And you're going to try and get up under that toilet seat there where that hook's on. Excellent job. Well done. Now, I'm not using this rag for anything else. It's going straight in the laundry because... Uh, now, the next thing I like to do is get out my gel, and I'm gonna hold this and get, I'm gonna um, squeeze it kind of around underneath the ring. You can see how I've squeezed it all around the edge, and that is gonna bleach out all around that toilet bowl. Now, what I'm gonna do with this brush is I'm going to scrub all along the outside, up above where the water is, and believe it or not, all around the edge of the water, in there, and then down in. Now, here's what, here's a cool trick. If you will hold your toilet bowl brush like this on the edge, you can see it's dripping water from inside the potty. You do not want that water dripping all over your floor, even if you're gonna clean your floor next. So what I do is I close the lid over that toilet bowl brush and it can just sit there and drip until it's done. And I'll come back in a little bit once it's done dripping and I'll flush the toilet and get all that gunk down the toilet and it'll be all done. Most home bathrooms that you might end up cleaning would have a shower. I have a shower and a bathtub over here. They need to be cleaned regularly, but because most of the time when you're cleaning a public restroom, you're not going to have a shower, I'm not going to show you that skill today. If you are working in a restaurant or a gas station, usually you will have sinks, you'll have toilets, you will have floors, and you may have urinals, which I don't have here at my home, but you most of the time don't have to worry about a shower, so we're going to skip it. But if you are practicing these skills at home and your family asks you to clean the bathtub, it's the same skills. Spray, 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 wipe, 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 and then you want to rinse it down either with your shower or with a, um, a bucket of water. Okay, great news. My toilet bowl brush was done dripping, so I gently tap, tap, tapped it on the edge, and then I put it right back in its little holster. And now you can see all the gooey gel that is bleaching out the inside of the tub and killing all those germs. There it is. Now I'm going to flush that down. And now I have a clean toilet. The very last thing that you do when you're cleaning out a bathroom is you need to clean the floor. It will be very difficult for me to show you how to do that. And sweeping and mopping are their own set of skills. So I'm going to skip that for this video, but I will tell you a few tips that will be helpful. First, sweep up all the mess before you start getting anything wet. So before you do the mop, always sweep. If you start mopping, but you haven't swept first, you're gonna have a bunch of junk, like pieces of grass and clumps of mud and maybe a little piece of Easter grass and some napkin that's all over the floor. And then you can't figure out how to pick it up with your mop, yuck. That is not what you want. So sweep your floor first and sweep it thoroughly. If you want to use a, um, a hand vacuum like a dust buster, you can do that. That's what I usually do to make sure my floor is very clean. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to mop. And my big tip for mopping is don't get too much water and don't paint yourself into a corner. So I like to use this mop that has the spray method, both because that's very fun and because it makes sure I don't get too much water on my floor. Because if you get too much water, it's very hard to get it mopped back up. Number two, when I say don't paint yourself into a corner, I mean you wanna start over here in this corner and mop toward the door. If you start at the door and you mop yourself this direction, then you're stuck over here and the floor is wet and you can't get out. Ah, I've done that before and it's terrible. Oh, my mom just fell over. So here you have cleaned my bathroom with me and we've done a great job. And one thing you can't tell is that it smells so much better in here. 
So what you would do after you've done all of these skills is you empty out your trash can, put in a fresh trash bag, and put everything back in place. Then put your cleaning supplies away and you are finished. Great job.